Whosoever draws this hammer, if they be worthy, shall have the power to learn how to draw four. Hello there, my name is Philip and welcome to Totally Amazing. And today in honor of Thor, Love and Thunder, I thought why not let's learn how to draw Thor from Love and Thunder. Now this one may be a little bit complicated because there is a lot going on in that costume. Hoy, so many little intricate lines, but bear with me, we will get there. But you know what's cool? This version of Thor actually pays homage to the original version of Marvel's Thor from back in 1962, number 83 of Journey into Mystery, his first appearance from Marvel. So for today, you're going to need a pencil, a rubber, a marker of some sorts, um, paper, obviously, and I'm going to be doing some coloring. So I'm going to be using my uh -huh -huh markers because they're pretty cool and I like saying uh -huh -huh. But before we get started, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and ring that bell so that you can get notified as soon as the next exciting episode of Totally Out Amazing comes out. Also, stay tuned to the end for the secret word of awesomeness so you can show people how awesome you are and how committed you are. And stay tuned for the bloopers because I know there's going to be some bloopers. I've already made some already. Shh. All right, let's make some magic. <laughs> So what we do first, we start off with our pencil layer. So I'm going to put in an upside down egg and put in the basic general shape of what the character is going to be by using the, the skeleton and putting in some very soft lines just to work out what the overall image is going to look like. Okay, so from here, I'm pretty happy with the overall shape of what the character is going to be. Time to make him look like Thor. So I put in my six circles, as you can see, which are very indicative of Thor, or the Marvel version of Thor. Now I'm starting to put in the, the finer details of what's on the new Thor Love and Thunder chest. There's a lot going on here, so pay a lot of attention. The best way I think about it is thinking like there's a, a big blue hammer on his chest where the edges are all nice and grey and uh, the lines sort of help accentuate that sort of look on the overall chest of the character. Also notice the belt buckle, it's sort of in the shape of a bit of a hammer, which is kind of cool thing as he is the god of thunder with his hammer. Now with his leg guards, he's basically got three, two that come off his belt and one as you can see here with the chain mount that's actually just hanging off the leg.
Now his belt here, it's sort of like a broad pencil on the end and just a few little intricate lines like so and you're done nice and easy. Now I'm working on the cape, so it's giving him his nice lovely flowing cape. I actually have a video on how to draw capes which goes into a lot more detail. But as you can see there, the, the two circles at the top, they sort of connect to the cape and that's where the joining point for the cape is. Also he's got some shoulder pads there which are very important in the new Love and Thunder. Now we're working on to his wrists, which are very interesting because this part here, that part I just did then, that little rectangle, that's very indicative of the original Marvel character's Thor, which I'll put up a picture of that right now. The wrists actually have just that little red and black stripe on them, and they've actually put that into this film, which I thought was a very nice touch. Okay, now for Stormbreak. As we know, the whole shaft is actually just wood from Groot's arm. Whereas I like to think of one end that we're working on here is an axe head, and the other end is it's sort of more of a hammer shape, and that's how I get the Stormbreaker effect. Okay, now I'm starting with the face. I'm drawing in the eyes, then the nose. Now with the mouth, I put, I put in a little bit of a smirk on the mouth, but for the beard, you'll see that I join the beard between the nose and the top lip, and then I put, you can only see the bottom lip. That's a big key for drawing beard. So you have your, your hair on the top, the mustache on the top over the top of the lip, and then the bottom you can actually see part of the mouth itself. Now I'm drawing in the hair, putting in some nice solar lines to indicate what the shape of the hair is with some nice flowing mane as it was, because he's Thor and he looks pretty impressive.
Okay, now I'm up to the inking stage, and this is the part where I actually go over the lines that I want to keep, and then I can rub out all the lines that I don't want to keep after. So see how I've actually crossed over with the hair over the body, and you can see the lines in between. This is where I can finalize what parts in front, what parts behind, and only draw the lines that are in front. That's the whole point of inking, and it makes it, makes it stand out a lot more. While this is going on, I thought I'd share an interesting fact with you guys. Did you know that Thursday is actually named after Thor, the original Norse god who the Marvel character base is, is based on? So Thor's day became Thursday. In fact, four out of the seven days of the week are actually named after the Norse pantheon of gods. Tuesday is named after the Norse god of justice whose name was Tyr. Tyr's day became Tuesday. Wednesday is actually named after Thor's father, Odin. And I know what you're thinking, but it's Wednesday, not Odin's day. Well, Odin actually goes by many names as well. He's called Wotan, Woden. So Woden's day became Wednesday. And that's where Wednesday comes from. And finally, Friday is named after Thor's mother and Odin's wife, Frigga. Frigga's day became Friday. Friday. Uh, the other days of the week, uh, Monday is named after the moon. Uh, Sunday is obviously named after the sun. And Saturday is actually named for the Roman god, and thus also the planet, Saturn. So Saturn Day, Saturday. And that's what the names of the week are actually based on. So I know it looks like there's a lot going on. There's a lot of intricate lines. But the basic way to think about it is, is if the lines below the belt are quite straight. Whereas the lines above the belt and around the chest, they sort of go out on a V shape. And that's what the basic lines of the new costume seem to follow. So if you get that right, you should be halfway there. Okay, so I finished inking. So what I'm doing now is I'm rubbing out all my pencil lines because they're all, always a little bit scratchy. And what it'll do, it'll leave me with this lovely crisp image that the inks make. Okay, so now I'm putting down my colors using my lovely ahoo-hoo markers. So as you'll see in a sec with my arm, I go a bit thicker on one edge to show the shadow underneath the, 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 the shoulder blade and the underside of the arm. This helps to define your character a lot better. Now there's going to be three main colors on the body. There's going to be blue, gray, and gold. There's a lot of gold in this image, as you'll see. Now gold is mostly used in the trimming of the edges of the character, except this part here with the plate mail. And on the chest, half of the pectorials, you could see that half is gold and half will be blue. But mostly the gold is used as a, a separation color between the blue and the gray. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a light blue on just a few little spots where the metal color is. I'm not coloring the whole thing light blue, just a few little spots, leaving a bit of white, and that helps gives the illusion of a metal silvery color. So now we're working on the blue. Now what I did there with the underside of the peck, I went over once with the blue, and then I did the whole peck again so that it got two layers of blue on the underside. So it gives it a bit of a, a darker effect and makes it more of a shadow, so it looks realistic. I actually like the way they've spread the blue and the grey throughout the costume room this time. It's sort of very balanced. It makes it look like there's an even amount of blue to grey. It's, it's quite interesting and it's sort of not one part is completely blue and not one part is completely grey. There's grey at the top and there's blue at the bottom. It's very interesting. I like the way they've done it. Okay, so now we're working on the grey, which is the darkest colour that we're putting onto Thor. And as you can see, the majority of what's left is going to be in grey. Now, when you're colouring, don't be afraid to go over certain spots over and over again, like I will in the leg in a sec. There. What that does, it makes it look like there's a shadow effect there. So it makes it darker, puts on a bit more pigment, and makes it look like shadow. So that's good for when you're colouring to make it, just, just give it a bit more pop. So don't be afraid to go over spots twice. This technique really comes in handy when you're doing stuff like hair. What I'm doing here is I'm putting a base colour down for the general colour of the hair. And as you can see, I'll go in a few spots and just go over it again, just to put a bit of shadow, a little bit more definition in, and make it look a bit more interesting. You'll also notice that I'm leaving a few spots white, like I just did on the wrist guards there, and on the top of the hair. This shows that there's a light source, and this also adds to the dynamics of making the colours look a lot more interesting. Now for the cape in my favourite colour red. What I'm doing there is I'm just putting a little bit of a edge colour on so I don't go too close to the main image. But what I'm doing now is I'm using that same technique as you'll see here where I go over just certain spots to make it a little bit darker. Helps to find the, 
the shadow of the cape and makes it more interesting rather than just being one flat red color. So go over the parts over and over again just to make it a little bit darker, makes it look more interesting. You might also notice I've got an extra bit of paper just sticking out the side there. That's just so I can have something to draw out onto beyond the edges of the paper. Sometimes it's even worth coming back after the ink has dried to go over again just to make a fresh dark layer on like I did on the arms just there. And finally Stormbreaker. So obviously I'm going to use a brown for the wood part of the shaft, but with the actual metal of the hammer and the axe head, I'm actually going to use just a light blue on the edges and I'm going to have some lightning coming off because I want it to look like there's energy coming off it. So I'm not going to colour in the grey, I'm going to make it look like there's a light coming from it. So I hope that's given you some good guides on what to look for when you're trying to draw your own version of Thor from Love and Thunder. There's a lot there, isn't there? Thor Love and Thunder, great adventure, looking forward to seeing it. Speaking of adventure, I have my own comic, it's called Antispy. It's full of lots of magic and adventure. If you love Thor, you'll definitely love Antispy. So check it out, there's a link in the description. Wow, you made it this far? Well done you! I guess you're waiting for the secret word of awesomeness. Well, how about we make it Storm, as in Stormbringer. And well, Thor is the god of thunder and lightning, and that is a storm, so let's put Storm in. So put Storm into the comments, to let people know how awesome you are and that you made it this far. Well done you. Other than that, thank you for joining me on how to draw Thor from Love and Thunder and I'll see you next time. Bye for now. Thor, Love and Thunder, Thunder, Love and Thunder. You know, the rabbit. We'll get there. For today, you're going to need a... something that I can't find right now. Turn on camera.